Welcome to episode 8 of Vectorland. Last episode, I added this like food court with restrooms and some more scenery, as well as a staff building. But this episode, I'm going to work on a massive B&M inverted coaster that I want to seem like a new gen Alpengeist almost. So the station is going to be like over here, it's going to take up most of this land. And then I might want it to like come back and then go over this path, but I'm not so sure about that. But I kind of also want it to be a terrain coaster. It'll make like a pit. So I have some terrain here. So yeah, like I said, a new version of Alpengeist. Not going to be as intense, but I want it to be pretty much just as big, maybe a bit longer. So I don't have many ideas for the layout just yet. I'm hoping to figure it out. I think I'm actually going to go nine cars long, as you can see here. Because the Alpengeist has nine cars, but the front car doesn't have any uh, seats or anything. It's like a for weight. I want this to be, I guess, the first with nine cars. So th I want this to be kind of like... Alpengeist mixed with Monster at uh, Gronoland. I want it to be probably like 185 feet tall with maybe a close to 200 foot drop. I don't want it to quite be a hyper though. 183 feet? Yeah, that seems pretty good. No pre drop or anything. I, I was thinking of this drop being similar to like. Renegade, where it kind of drops off the lift, turns to the right, and then turns to the left when it gets near the bottom. 55 degrees, so this is already steeper than like Montu's drop, I'm pretty sure, because Montu's drop is like 50. Okay, so it reaches 195 above ground. So I've got 130 feet to pull up. Could make it steeper. Okay, I'm gonna make it steeper. 65 degrees. I want to add a wooden coaster after this. Probably like a family gravity group. That's definitely not banked enough. And that looks too intense. I don't want this drop to go past 4 G's. Let's see the back row here. a healthy amount of g-force right there. I like that. I normally don't smooth one element at a time, but I just want to see if this drop works, because the drop is usually the hardest element to get right, for me at least. Okay, that's fine. And if anyone's wondering how long it takes me to get to this point of the ride, you know, just finishing up the first drop, I'm already 20 minutes in. So now, I'm gonna do... I'm trying to think. I could make up a new element. I have an idea. So how big is that drop? Negative 13. Is that 197 feet? Isn't that the height of Alpengeist? Like almost exactly, or maybe even exactly? I don't know. I haven't memorized Alpengeist's height. So this is kind of like a new element idea. It's similar to a dive loop. It like starts off looking like an upward zero G roll, and then it will dive back down almost in like a helix. I just have this idea for an element, but I'm not so sure it's possible with this coaster editor. Wait, that actually, that actually didn't look too bad. Wait a second. That doesn't actually look that bad. Oh, 
this is gonna be a nice ride, I already know. Roll looks fine. That looks... That looks like a lot of fun. So this episode, I literally think I'm just going to build the layout for this. And nothing else, because this ride is massive. I'm not even gonna, like, smooth it completely. Building this makes me want to re-ride uh, Alpengeist. Oh wait, I forgot to put that piece of track in. Okay, I'm hoping to stay below 4.2 G's here. 3 G's. All out for a second. 5.2. That's... that's too much. Once again, forgot to put that piece there. And once again, going for like 4, under 4.2. 4 point two. Four point two four, okay. Oh my goodness! Oh, I almost forgot to put this back. And also, if you're wondering why I have this piece deleted... Actually, let me show you guys. So, while I have that piece deleted, you can see me placing down these pieces like takes pretty much no time, right? But then I put this piece back. In. And then now, you can see I can't do it as fast. I don't really know why that's the case. I think it has something to do with... I, I actually have no idea why that's the case, but anyways. Um, so, basically, if you, like, isolate this track that you're working on from the rest of the track, then it doesn't lag nearly as much. Ooh, what if I have it, like... Yeah, so I'll have it start down here, but then what if it ends, like, higher up, you know what I mean? Like, 20 feet above where it started. It'll make the loop look weird, but it'll be functional, so that way you can actually make it over this uh, drop. So it's gonna, it's, this is not it, but like, it's gonna end up looking something like this. Yeah, that looks about right. So the loop actually starts 23 feet lower than when it ends. And it makes the loop almost look like it's falling backwards or like going uphill. But let's see it. the forces on it. Oh, I almost forgot to put that piece back in. This is a reoccurring theme of this episode. Also, it hits 68 miles an hour going into this. That's probably the second fastest point in the ride. Okay, so 3G's. It's a peak of a, almost 4 there. That's pretty crazy. I almost want the top of the loop to be a bit tighter, but I think we're going to leave it like this. It's more circular, kind of. So now, as you can see, this isn't really realistic, per se. So now what I do to make my loops, is I select everything, and then I move it to the side a little bit. I don't want to overdo it because I'm going to do a couple more runs to make it perfect, if that makes sense. I don't want to make it turn too much in one piece because I can just come back and redo it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It likes to be far enough away. A hundred and six feet tall. 106 foot tall loop, actually, terrain relative, 143 foot tall loop from the top of it to the uh, terrain below. But I think we're going to change the terrain a bit. Now we have a really epic loop. And yeah, that's far enough away from each other. Once again, almost forgot to put the, the piece in. This is like, what, my fourth time in this one episode? Also, I don't know why my audio glitches for roller coasters, but I'm definitely not the only one. Oh wait, shoot, that's not a big enough clearance there. Well, that's a problem. 
We'll deal with it later. Let's see if this is good enough. About 25 miles an hour into where the mid course would be. That's fine. I just I just am gonna redo this because there's a clearance issue. I I didn't see it, but I forgot to place down this freaking piece again. That's the fifth or sixth time. I'm trying to figure out where I can lead the layout from here. I need one. I need to have one of those stupid abrupt transitions into the final break run, like most inverts have for some reason. I honestly kind of forgot how much speed it will have going into this finale. So hopefully it'll be okay. Oh, that also gives air time. I need to bank that more. Zero G roll. It's actually got the perfect amount of speed almost. Just need to change this banking here. Almost done with the ride. I just need to turn it back around and then connect it. Need to adjust the scenery a little bit. Well, not the scenery, the terrain. Okay, the inaugural test run with pretty much none of it smoothed besides the first drop. I know there's a little bit of it smoothed. Oh, I also almost forgot that little piece. And there's another piece here. It's not going to be smooth, but it will... Like, the layout's pretty much done. Almost two hours of just designing the layout. When there's scenery and stuff, this is going to be so cool. time in the back there would be great. This is really cool. Is the laterals good here? Yeah, pretty much perfect. Need to remove some of the terrain there, that's a bit close. Zero G roll over what's most likely gonna be the entrance. Gotta remove the terrain there definitely. Final corkscrew into the brake run. That is a very, very nice layout. I forgot to make the brakes actually do anything. But whatever, that is... I am very happy with that. How long is it? 4,600 feet long. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. I just need to test one last thing. And that is, if this mid-course was to stop a train... And then it would have been pushed off at 8 miles an hour. Which is what I have it set to here. Would it be able to make it? And the reason to do this test is in case if the train, you know, realistically would have gotten stopped on the mid course for any reason. Um, it's to see if the mid course would actually be useful. Because if the train was stopped here, and then, it, and then you can only push it out at 8 miles an hour. Um, if it can't make it to the end, then there's really no point of having a mid-course. Uh-oh, this is not looking very good, if I'm going to be honest. Please make it... Oh god, it's going pretty slow. Oh please! No! Dang it! So what can I do about that? 
Yeah, I think that the best bet is just to make the whole brake run flat with drive tires. That's what I will do right now. Okay, now let's see. I'm pretty sure the brake run is a good, like, I don't know, 5, 10 feet lower than what it was before. This is going to be my last test run. It is almost 10 p.m. for me, and I've been recording for almost two hours. I will finish this next episode. Okay, 8 miles an hour. Please. Please. And... I can put a drive tire there. So it makes it, but it most definitely would valley a bunch. I just need to put a drive tire right there. Okay, so, okay, one more test run. Okay. Now, just finally, to see if it works with this little drive tire at the end. And then I'll just, yeah, then that'll be it. Almost perfect, pretty much. It's the drive tire with like six miles an hour left. And it can. Yeah, so there would probably be a valleying issue. Like, with trains that are stopped on the mid course, but still. I'm counting this as a win. But yeah, that's a very impressive ride, in my opinion. 4,600 feet long. I'm pretty sure that would be the longest inverted coaster. I'm also pretty sure that this would be the only inverted coaster with three inversions after the mid-course. I like it. Okay, thanks for watching. This, I'm very tired now. This took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm very, very happy with this layout. So yeah, thanks for watching. Next episode, I'll probably I'll smooth it. Probably start work on the station building or something. Okay, yeah, goodbye.